It is our pleasure to be joined by a former and current Sooner. <laughs> Austin Stogner's in the house. Yes, sir. Big Thank y'all for having What's me. What's going on, man? Nothing much. Thanks, y'all. Thanks for having me. Well, what's it been like? What, like the wrapping up the season? Um, I mean, it's been busy for you over the last couple of weeks, to say the least. Yeah, no, it's it's been busy uh, for sure. It's been crazy. Uh, I was talking to someone the other day, and I'm like, "Yeah, I told you that like two months ago." And she's like, uh, "My girlfriend." She's like, "No, you told me that like two weeks ago." <laughs> so it's been crazy. I yeah, like, it's all been going so fast. Feels so long, but it's been a short amount of time. Yeah. Okay. I before we you know, talk about why you're coming back and that, that let's go back to why you left in the first place. Right. And clearly mm -hmm. a lot was going on at the end of last season, uh, you know, with coach Riley leaving everything that was happening. So I, I think a lot of fans are just curious, like, why did you make that initial decision to transfer from Oklahoma? Uh, you know, like, like you said, that time was just like so crazy, so much turnover in a short amount of time. And, um, you know, I just tried to make the best decision for myself. Um, and I felt like that was, you know, coming off of like, I've been in that air raid system. So I wanted to, you know, I was like, I need to go. If I want to make a my name for myself at the next level, I have to get, you know, better at blocking. And um, I thought, why not go to a, like a pro style system and, you know, kind of um, get thrown in the fire a little bit there so I can get, you know, better at blocking because I knew I'd need that at the next level. And then it just made a lot of sense um, for me to go with Coach Beamer. I knew him. I had, you know, I played with him for two years and I loved playing for him. And uh, it just made a lot of sense to go there. And um, so that's that's really what it came down to was uh, those things. And yeah, so how was the offense? It, was it what you thought? A um, little bit more pro style, maybe a little bit more inline blocking. Were you, was it what you thought it was going to be? And were you able to develop those skills that you were hoping to? Oh yeah, I was, I was able to develop those skills. Um, I got a lot better at it. Um, you know, you get thrown in and playing in the, the SEC and stuff. And so, you know, I was able to grow as like a, a player and as like a person, so, you know, it was an overall, it was a really great experience at South Carolina. You know, they're great people there and I'm, I'm grateful for them. And I, I really like that place. And uh, like, so it was, it was a good experience. You are, uh, I'm sure you'll understand uh, until OU gets to the SEC, uh, South Carolina is kind of my SEC team because of, uh, because <laughs> of coach Beamer. I, We've had him on the podcast many times now, and he is he's one of the most likable people ever. And he's a hell oh, yeah, of a football man. coach. What what was it like playing for him when he's the head coach, right? You played, you know, he was your tight ends coach. And that's completely different though than yeah. when he's the head man. Like how different was it? Um, it was it was it was a little bit different, you know. Um, you're in his meetings like every day, he's like your position coach, and then you know, all of a sudden you're sitting in a team meeting and he's up there and you're kind of just like, what are you doing up there? Like, <laughs> whatever. But, um, he was, he was really cool to play for. He's a, he's a great coach and, um, he gets the best out of his players and he really cares for them and, and they're going to do a lot of great things there. Now you mentioned, you know, playing in the sec, uh, what was it like? What, you know, especially you're, you're blocking some mutants there mm -hmm. on the edge, man, they've got some massive edge players and, sure you saw a bunch of really good ones what what was the difference and is that part of like your development was playing against some of those type of guys uh yeah you know you always hear like you know in the big 12 it's like oh it's not the sec it's but in reality it's like it's very similar maybe the interior guys are a little bit bigger a little bit more athletic but um as far as like skill position wise it's kind of like across the board from like anywhere skill positions like dbs and all that stuff are pretty much the same you know receivers maybe a little bit bigger but um defensive wise the like the dbs and whatever are just about the same just maybe the interior linemen are a little bit bigger but um it wasn't too crazy of a jump well how about that some people are gonna be shocked to hear that <laughs> now uh, spencer rattler it was an interesting conclusion to his time at Oklahoma, uh, kind of an up and down season for him in his first year at South Carolina. What was it 
what was it like playing with Spencer there in the SEC, new team, like completely new cast of characters around you guys? Uh, it was it was for sure cool to see how like him grow and like learn the offense and you know just kind of like talking like being able to like to talk through stuff with him being like hey like you know I kind of knew like what he like since I've known him for so long I know what he like likes and like what he needs like when he's playing the best like his mentality for that and so like just kind of you know being there for him just being like hey dude just go out there and just freaking do what you do best and rip the ball and so um it was cool to see that and see him grow throughout the season and then obviously play really really well in the last two games man it looks like there's a ton of excitement there like the atmosphere at the home games looks like it was is just incredible now, they've always had a good fan base but um the last couple of years has given them a lot of reason for hope for the future what, what was it like playing there Oh, they do a really good job in their stadium of, you know, getting it, getting it going. Cause that Willie B that place gets, it gets jumping. So um, it's, it's, it was a really cool environment to play for play at. And um, so, yeah, they, they do a really good job there. The fans are, fans are crazy. Like you want them. So they, uh, they do a good job. How, how much fun was that Tennessee game? Obviously we weren't there. We were yeah. just watching <laughs> it on television, but it was a beat down. And that place, uh, I mean, the stadium looked like it was just going yeah. insane. Yeah, that thing was about to come loose. It was that thing was jumping, but um, it it didn't that that game didn't get as loud as when we took the opening kickoff back against Texas A and M. That was the loudest I've ever heard a stadium. That place was going crazy. I had family there, and they were like sitting up top, and they said that like the whole stadium was shaking. They thought it was about to come down. Yeah, it's been it was pretty wild watching watching some of those games with you guys this year. Um, I whenever I I hate to just sit here and compare it, but one of the things that makes me mad is I I I get mad whenever I go places and I see what I consider to be a better in stadium atmosphere. I I wish. I wish we were more consistent at Oklahoma in, in some, and, and it takes like the situation always matters, right? Like if you're a team that's on the rise and you're hosting big, you know, teams that are higher ranked than you, but I, how did it, how, how did the two compare? Is it, and I know you probably don't want to get into the, maybe you don't want to get into that either, but like, what was it like in, in comparison to what you saw at Oklahoma? Uh, like you said, it's like, it's like different because, like at Oklahoma, you're always like the higher rate. I can't remember when we were like at home and we were the underdogs. So it's oh, like that, that, you can't remember because it doesn't happen. <laughs> yeah, it never <laughs> happens. Exactly. So it's it's just different. Um, yeah, but they both they both go crazy and they both get wild. And like third down at Oklahoma is is loud, and third down at South Carolina is loud. But it's just it's just like a little bit different, you know. They're they're Perfect. the South That's Carolina the fans just they just seem they just seem a little drunker than the OU fans. <laughs> yeah, you know? I mean they, they might be, they might be because they get the they get the seven o'clock kickoffs. You know, yeah, yeah. No, it make it makes sense. Now I will say, and I'm not sure if you were able to see it, like able to watch any OU games. I know you were playing on Saturdays. They they have they are working on the in uh, like the in game atmosphere, like the in game entertainment, and actually the Bedlam game. Like the that's last good. home game of the year, they did a really good job. So that good. that that is on that's on the upswing. On the rise. Stock. It's yeah. on the upswing. Yeah. <laughs> now, one one question I do have, I, I love rivalries. I, I think it's one of the things that makes college football the best sport on the planet. How does OU Texas compare to what you experienced in South Carolina versus Clemson? Um, you know, like I've been a fan for Oklahoma since I committed, like I committed like junior year of high school. And so I've been a fan for so long. So like, I kind of know the Oklahoma, Texas rivalry. And so for me, like everyone like talks about like the Clemson, uh, South Carolina rivalry. And like, you know, I just don't know. I didn't know like the history of it, like how big of a deal, like it was. So for me, like, it just like, that's like part of the reason like I'm coming back is just cause like 
the connection I have with Oklahoma and, you know, like I miss those big games, miss the rivalry. Like I know, like I have connection, like with the fan base and that university and like take pride in, in that university. So like, just cause I've been a fan for so since I was a junior in high school. So that's like, it's just, it just was different, but like, that's like, obviously like a huge rivalry, but it was just like, for me, it was just like different Yeah, coming in there one year, like not really not really knowing not knowing the backstory and yeah exactly like it's, it's almost like a it's like an ongoing soap opera right you have to know yeah. the backstory if you're just <laughs> gonna all of a sudden show up and, and watch it for once I, I understand that yeah so i did you did you how long have you known that maybe you wanted to come back to oklahoma or or was it you just wanted to get into the portal and see what happens like how how did that whole thought process go um it was after the Clemson game where I was kind of like talking to my position coach and coach Beamer and being like where my position is like going into the draft and whatever and it was like um but the last couple of weeks I'm like this could be my last time playing football you know like because like nothing is guaranteed at the next level and I was talking to a couple of my my buddies and I'm like dang it's like crazy this is our last go around and I'm like I don't want it to be like, I love football too much for me to have another year and like not play football, you know? Cause like in 20 years, I'll look back at it and be like, dang, I wish I would have played that season just because, you know, I loved it so much. And I'm like, I just want to play. And then going through that process, I'm like, why do I love it? And I was like, I just, I want to play. I want to go back to Oklahoma and play. And um, so I kind of like went to the portal and then, like, once my name was live, I called my buddy. I was like, you got to set me up. I got to come back. And hopefully they take me. And then and then Coach Finnables was – showed enough <laughs> enough grace for me to come back. So I'm very grateful for that. Yeah, it's uh, – I mean, we were all extremely fired up when when the rumor mill started a churn. And, man, and yeah. what was I, – I assume you got on the phone uh, – with Joe John, uh, with Coach Finley, and mm -hmm. what what were those conversations like? Was it just like, hey man, I want to come back. Like, <laughs> you got a spot for me? Like, was it that simple? Uh, yeah. Like, I called my buddy, and I was like, you got to set me up. And he went in there, and apparently he was like, this isn't the time to joke around. Like, <laughs> whatever. And he called me, and when I got in, he was like, are you for real? And I was like, yeah. And then he like tried to go and like every coach has like their like recruiting spill like hey we're going to use you a lot I'm like coach I'm good I'm, I'm coming back like it wasn't I don't, <laughs> you don't have anything. to tell me just, <laughs> yeah, just you don't give have me to. a yes or no <laughs> yeah what would coach Beamer say um I kind of told him like the reasons why I was leaving he was like I'd love to for you to stay like you'll have an amazing opportunity here but I like I totally get it so he was cool he just wants like the best first players like obviously he wants the best first program, but I kind of told them it wasn't like a conversation, like, get me this, get me that. I was just like, look, I, I have to go. I have to go back. That's, I mean, and if anyone, I, I've always felt that coach Beamer is like the ultimate, like puts his players before anything uh, type of guy. And I think Venables is the same way. Mm -hmm. What <laughs> did you have many conversations with Venables? Uh, leading up to your commitment because I I'm so interested in what he had to say. Um, I had one, I just had one conversation with him like an hour after I went in the portal. I was like, yeah, the U all is coming today. I'll be there tomorrow. <laughs> and I, I ended up not going, but I was there that Friday, but he was like, you know, you didn't like when I came in, like you didn't know me from like a guy on the street. And I was like, yeah, like what, like I didn't, like say no to him he's like you didn't know me you thought you were trying to do what's best for you and um I told him the reasons why I was wanting to come back and he was like you know those are the reasons those are the reasons like we want people here at Oklahoma like guys like like that so that's basically how the conversation went well whenever so uh, I don't know it, it's whenever Venables came in obviously like that probably didn't have anything to do with with you leaving but what was it like like whenever you left and then seeing the season and the struggles that they had this year go with six and six like what 
what was that like? And maybe I'm sure you still had some friends on the team. Like, what were those guys saying? Like, how did that whole thing play out for you? Um, like it didn't, it just didn't like feel right for me. Like playing, playing there. Like I'd watch them on the game, like watch them on TV. Like I watched every game and I was like, I just, I just felt like you should have been there helping. Yeah, exactly. Like I felt like I, like I loved where I was at South Carolina. I felt like that's where the Lord was calling me, but I just didn't feel like right there. Like with it just because of the connection I have to Oklahoma. Like I graduated from Oklahoma, you know, and it just didn't feel right. I felt like I should have been there, like huge, like FOMO if you're missing out. So yeah, the six and six record, it was all your fault, Stogner. <laughs> I know it's my bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, it just apologize to the fans, man. What are you yeah, doing? My bad. Yeah. My bad. But were you able, you, you mentioned that able to watch a bunch of the games. Were you, were you surprised by the type of season Braden Willis had? Right, man, because um, he was he was the most consistent player on the team, whether it was catching the ball, but certainly as a blocker, like he really stepped it up. Were you, were you surprised that he was able to have the type of season that he had? No, uh, I mean, he's he's an unbelievable, unbelievable guy who like works like super hard and um, is a team first guy. And he's like a he's a great leader and um, he's always been a great leader in that tight end room is always like pushing us to be the best and he's like a he's like a horse like he works his tail off and so it was it was really great to see him have a have a great season and um so I was really really happy for him now whenever you coach Finley was talking to you about the ways they wanted to use you and I'm sure maybe you've had conversations with Levy or some of the other guys like what is like kind of the vision for your role going to be in this offense whenever you hear it from the coach's perspective um, to kind of use me like in space, um, they're like, you're, you know, you're athletic. So we want to get you out in space running routes and, you know, like get you in line blocking because of your length. And, um, uh, you know, it suits me better, but also be able to insert on backers and use me in the backfield and, um, but get me out in space and let me, let me run routes and let me create mismatches on the wildcat. Like, uh, they put Braden, uh, at quarterback a couple of times. Yeah, maybe. I guess so. <laughs> well, we'll have to come up. We'll have to come up with Stog Cat, Wild yeah. Stog. Yeah, yeah, be, yeah. I guess. Uh, you know, I was always like, you always think about, you know, like cool names and you're like eighteen wheeler. You know, you hear a song. Oh, I, might, I might not be eighteen anymore, so you never know. Oh yeah, that is. So what is there's is. Oh is yeah, it, I bet your parents are pissed. Oh man, because <laughs> they already have all the jerseys, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess no, they don't they don't have any jerseys, but I you know, I've been 18 for so long. I might have to go to 81 maybe. 81, there be, you go. That might I be like the that. move. Well, Trayvon West entered the portal. He was 81, so he's you yeah. know, that should be open, open. you know. Yeah, but, maybe 81. Or is this a situation is Helms 18, the other tight end? Yeah, uh-huh. This could be an NFL situation, Ted. You know what I'm saying? Like, hey, he's coming vets coming back. <laughs> how much for the number you know yeah. type of type of situation on our hands yeah, let me like take how, you out to the ranch for the number you know? yeah how much yeah. how much does 18 mean to you yeah <laughs> i don't know it's kind of in my opinion it's like listen you're a freshman man i'm sorry i don't know <laughs> no i can't do that it's how it goes this yeah is, there's a <laughs> i was talking to the, the, uh, the equipment guy larry i was like what number are you gonna put me in like trying to fill them out. He's like, yeah, I'm probably going to put you in 99. I was like, okay, thanks. So <laughs> awesome. Would, yeah. Sweet <laughs> number. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. This is, and you know, I haven't heard you really talk about this, but it's something that, you know, we brought up uh, when it happened, like how scary was the leg thing, man? Because yeah. it seemed like it got, to a really scary point, like maybe you don't want to talk about, it. maybe you don't want to reli relive that yeah. stressful time of your life. But I mean, how bad did that actually get? Um, it got really bad. I mean, I when I went in the hospital, like I remember that drive, like going to the hospital, like with Chris Watson at like twelve o'clock, and that was like the most pain I've ever been in in my life. Like that was terrible. Like I remember I like thinking that we were going to this one hospital that I, that I saw like closer to more. 
And then when he passed that, I'm like, dude, what are you doing? Like, I'm in so much pain. And he's talking to the doctor. And I'm like, when I get there, like, you got to knock me out. Like, this is terrible. And then so that that happened that like went on for like three days of like terrible pain. Like the doctor would come in and like if I didn't move it, it was fine. And then the doctor would come in and he had to like feel my leg and he'd like press on it. And I would just get like super mad because like it would hurt so bad. And, but it got bad. Like I lost like 30, 30, 35 pounds in, in 10 days. Like couldn't like came out, like couldn't do a push up. Like my body was like totally messed up. And I didn't realize like how long it'd take me to get, to get back from that injury. Like my whole body was just kind of just, just messed up. Are you back? Like what, what it did take a long time uh, to get all your strength back. And, and I'm mm -hmm. sure confidence, I'm sure like in the back of your head, like, it's like, you don't want to take a hit and perhaps something else like that happen. And uh, so it probably took a while to get mentally back into it, but like, where are you at weight wise? Are you, are you back and even like beyond where you were previously? So how's that, that whole uh, rehab gone? Uh, I think in 2021, um, like when I got back from the injury, like made it back for the bowl game, came back. And then that spring, like I just had like pain throughout the whole thing. I couldn't like really do anything um, workout wise, like lower body. Like I'd work out, like I went through spring practice and then I'd practice one day. And then the next day, like, I'd be in crutches and then it'd be like three days and then I'd try to practice again. And then I'd just like totally mess. Like it would hurt so bad. Like could barely walk. So I didn't really have like a spring practice. And then the summer, like I had to take it easy, take it light. Cause it would just like flare up sometimes. But then, so I finally got right before like fall camp, but like, I thought I was back. And then like, I look at film from back then and I'm like, yeah, I wasn't back at all. Um, I think, but then after the bye week, Baylor week, I started moving a little bit better. And that's when I think I started to, you know, get back. And then that off season. So I think I, I'm definitely, now I am, I had a good off season and now I'm back to moving the way I think I, the, as good as I can. And I think I'm better. I'm up faster than I was. I'm a lot stronger. And so I think I'm, I'm, I've gotten a lot better. And I'm I'm 100 back. I'm better than I better than I was. Dude, that's sure. great to hear. I mean that that was some scary shit, man. <laughs> I mean it was, but it, it's glad. I'm really glad to hear that you're feeling you're feeling all the way back. Have you talked to Jerry Schmidt at all? You uh, you familiar? You acquainted uh, yet? Yeah, I've heard. I've heard. I've heard the rumors. But um, yeah, I, I've had oh, some boy. buddies. I talked to him. I was up there this weekend to kind of like move some stuff in. And um, I talked to him for a little bit and he was like, let's get rolling. But I've heard, I've heard some, some crazy stories about him. So I'm ready. I'm ready to roll. Going to be exciting, man. Um, yeah. I'm happy to have you back. Uh, and, and, you know, we need you too. like the experience, like you're going to have to come in and, and be a leader in that room right away. There's a bunch of youth in there, and I don't know, maybe someone else is going to be coming in, but this is this is going to be a big opportunity, man. We're we're happy to have you back. No doubt, no, I'm I'm super super excited to be back, and thank y'all for taking taking me back. Yeah, yeah, we did. We totally did it. Now the, <laughs> yeah, the fans, exactly. <laughs> I'm sure there's some salty fans out there, but after you explaining how much you love Oklahoma, I'm sure they are. Uh, I'm sure they're going to be more accepting now. Stagner. Now, we do this thing on our podcast called Call Your Shot. Now, normally it's like they, the the listeners uh, send in something. We we discuss it, like whether it's a bold prediction, something like that. But mm -hmm. in, instead of doing that, we ask them for questions. For okay. You. So we've got a couple oh. here. Uh, All right. This first one comes from Matt. I'm going to go with A Bear. H e b e r t a bear. I mean, that's what I'm going with. Matt a bear who says, oh, "This is a good one." What bar slash restaurant is a must visit for OU fans when we have a future road game in Columbia? Ooh, that is a good one. Um, they have a lot of good places because it's like the capital or whatever. So there's a lot of good places, but I'd have to go with my go-to is always this place called Home Team Barbecue. 
and you you got to get the wings and they have you dip them in this alabama white sauce and those things are to die for they're really good and then the kingsman is like the place i would go to they got burgers and steak and place is good nice is so is there is campus there downtown is it like more in the middle like in the city than kind of like norman is Mm -hmm. i don't know smaller area yeah it's it's actually it's a really cool place um they got like the campus is in the city it's like spread out more spread out than norman and then you got the the city and then you got a couple other like vista places and then downtown it's it's really cool there i i look forward to visiting it in the future okay Mm -hmm. this last one comes from at drummer dad 1064 (laughs) he's gonna have a good question i can feel it i i'm sure there's i'm sure there's a origin story of that twitter handle (laughs) but he said he asks what did you miss most about norman that you're excited to get back to um just being in that stadium and like knowing what it means to me and like being around the guys and playing for this university that like I graduated at and have like pride for like I didn't like take that into account when I left and I didn't know how much I'd miss it but I'm just super excited to to be back I was really hoping I was really hoping he'd just be like sugars you know yeah yeah which, by the way, it's not there anymore, Stogner. I'm sorry, oh, man. man. I know. Don't I know. tell him That's... that yet. Wait till he's like. Yeah, wait till, I'm, wait till I'm enrolled. <laughs> he's already moved things in. We're fine, <laughs> Ted. We're yeah. fine. Well, man. Hey, we're, we're pumped that you're coming back. Um, it, it sounds like you're pumped as well, man. But it'll. Uh, it's gonna be a lot of fun. It's gonna be a fun last year for you, man. We appreciate you. Yes, sir. Thank you all for having me on. Really appreciate it.